I'm gonna get a fit for a driver today. I've been playing this C30 for about five, six years now. I'm gonna upgrade to something new here for 2021. We're gonna check it out here on TrackMan and see what fits me best. Hey golfers, Drew and Thomas here at the second swing tour van at the Minnetonka location. Uh, it's gonna be a fun one today, at least for me, because I'm gonna get fit for a new driver. I've been playing a Ping G30 LST for about six years now, and I'm very intrigued by some of these new models on the market. So Thomas is going to fit me for a new driver. So uh, Thomas, what does a driver fitting entail and what am I in for today? Yeah, so you're in for hitting a whole bunch of golf shots. You're probably gonna be pretty worn out by the end. So typically a driver fitting, we start off with your gamer. We like to see some baseline numbers, kind of see what we're kind of working with. Then we do a head test. So I've actually selected the Ventus, Futuger Ventus Black 7X golf shaft, because your golf shaft right now you're playing is a speed of 757X, which weighs about 78 grams. So does this. Mm -hmm. Torque ratings are very similar. So I like to test with a very, very similar golf shaft. Nice thing is at second swing, we have our all fit adapter system. So all fit adapter, I can test all the heads that you want to test with this golf shaft. It's nice. gonna be a pretty similar profile. Figure out which club head we like first, get the loft optimized, and then we'll try some extra golf shafts. Nice, I like it, I like it. So I mean, the ones that have caught my eye in particular so far, uh, you know, Mizuno STZ, uh, Callaway Epic Max LS, especially that kind of high MOI, low spin head, something I might need. Uh, and then kind of rad speed from Cobra, uh, the TaylorMade, sim 2 and ping g425 lst all kind of really have piqued my interest so far so uh that's kind of why i'm in because i feel like one of those models can certainly be an upgrade for me yeah and then keep in mind i mentioned you're gonna hit a whole bunch of golf shots normally we limit it to like three to four club heads at a driver fitting it's really hard because human error you know you can you can swing as fast as you want as long as you want but you're gonna get fatigued so mm -hmm. we'll definitely pay attention to that fatigue a little bit sure. there too so keep in mind when you do come in for a driver fitting at second swing you're gonna test three or four different driver heads out. You can maybe test two or three extra golf shafts. It's gonna to equate to about, including warming up, probably 50 or 60 golf shots. There's been some uh, research out there that have kind of showed that fatigue definitely happens around about 50 to 60 okay. driver golf swings in. 40 of those are probably testing, 20 of those are probably warming up. So we'll be paying attention to that a little bit okay. too. Okay, so. uh, that's a good thing to note. Um, we'll try to, you know, efficiently get this done. But I'm, I'm excited personally. I, uh, this is something I, I think I've been due for for a while. So uh, I'm ready to get started. Let's do it. Okay, Drew, I'm excited to see uh, baseline numbers with your driver. So what we'll do is we'll hit four or five shots with your driver now that you're all warmed up. Just keep in mind, keep that silver dot on that golf ball mm -hmm. facing up every single time you hit. We'll be hitting with the Titleist Pro V1X. Okay. So Drew, I ju you just handed me your driver. I did want to check the length of it too. We also do pay attention to the measurements of the driver that you're playing. So I just okay. want to check the measurement here really quickly. So the length is right around about 45 inches with the top end of the grip. It's ever so slightly over. Um, so when we do test the drivers with the OFIT system, it will also be 45 inches as well. Okay. I want to just touch on a few numbers and then just pay attention to where you were catching on the club face there too. We had one clear outlier here. Yeah, a little that bit. was that one that you kind of left the club face open on a little bit there. So I'm actually going to take that one away. That one was not like the other four there. Let's just kind of talk about your, your averages or what we're kind of seeing with regards to kind of numbers. So first thing we look at is club speed. So club speed around about 113 miles an hour. Think of that as potential distance. The more club speed you generate, the more potential distance you can get. Ball speed is gonna be more important when you're testing drivers because some different technologies, some different launch monitors will read club speed a little bit different, but ball speed's always consistent. Mm -hmm. So you will notice what happened here. You had one here, your smash factor at one, 152. What might have happened there with TrackMan is the club head might have been picked up just a little bit slower with this sure. particular head there too. But pay attention to ball speed. Always going to be really consistent every single time. Um, so what is smash factor? Smash factor is ball speed divided by club speed. So think of it as efficiency rating. So you'll notice here you had quite a few. You had one here that was kind of that, that miss it there as well. But you'll notice pretty good. You're, you're hitting it pretty, pretty solid. So what I do want to do really quickly is just bring up and just see where you were catching on the club face. So if we look here, if we look, notice a little bit of a tendency, a little bit on the toe side. So high toe is gonna generate 
a little bit less spin it's going to cause that ball to kind of dive out of the sky a little bit it was a little bit uncontrollable for you at times you had a couple of shots here that had that quick kind of duck hook mm -hmm. so if we bring out this screen here you can kind of see yeah. how they kind of dove over there to, to the left there um, that's a little bit to do with hit location it's a little bit to do with your, to your, to your golf swing so we're going to try and fit you for your golf swing and your tendencies so I would love to try and get you a little bit away from the toe, a little bit closer here. The ball would not curve as much. If the mm -hmm. ball didn't curve as much, it would stay in the air a little longer and carry a little bit further there as well. Also, one other thing I kind of noticed with, you, with, your, with your driver is you've got a LST nine degree driver, but it's set at the up position, mm -hmm. so it's at the, the small plus. So what that is, that's actually like plus 0 0.6 with regards to loft. It's also closing the club face a little bit. We know your tendency is to hook the ball, mm -hmm. right? Generally, I've seen when I've been playing with you, you generally miss the ball to the left. I want to get you away from that. I want to try and limit that. So we're going to do some optimization with face angle or as well to try and make sure Sweet. that we can get rid of that without you having to make swing changes because you just want to go out there and enjoy the game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's one thing I kind of noticed there as well. But generally speaking, ideally, the faster the club speed, the lower the launch angle, to keep that spin rate down, but you'll notice that your spin rate already is kind of pretty low as it is. Um, so I would like to maybe see us open up that club face just a okay. little bit there as well as, as we're testing this here as well. But we'll notice your best drive here, pretty good. 291 going 322, pretty pretty awesome right there. Just leaving a little bit on the table because if we look across over here at the height. I always talk about how tour average is about 100, 110 feet in the mm -hmm. air. Well, you'll notice with the exception of the one that you left your club face way open on. Way open. Way open. Face angle was 10 degrees <laughs> open on that one. Um, the ball, you know, carried quite a bit, a little bit shorter. So we're leaving a little bit on the table because the ball was kind of hooking a little bit and diving out of the sky. Mm -hmm. So be doing some optimization there. But we know for sure you fit into extra stiff golf shaft based on your, cl on your club speed. But we, we know that your... Club speed being around about 113 miles an hour, fit into extra stiff, so I'm gonna keep you there. We will test a couple others at the end. Okay. But the next step is the head test. So with the head test, you mentioned four different models. I'm gonna go grab those different models, and then we'll test those and see how they perform. Okay, perfect. Okay, Drew, I'm gonna start with the uh, Callaway Epic Max LS. Okay. Now I know these, this is one of the models that you definitely selected, and I did actually collect a couple of other different model ideas just because I know that you've got that low spin in there to left. We're gonna stick with the nine degree head for now. Okay. But then we might do some optimization with regards to loft. Okay. Definitely caught that higher on the face. Oh wow. Good start. Maybe not higher, but not toey. So Drew, that was a really good start. Just gonna chime in real quick. That height was the first time you got that height over 100 feet in the air. So that yeah. was awesome. Remember I mentioned, remember I mentioned 100, 110 feet in the air? Mm -hmm. That was great, because the ball was not going as far left. Yeah, I'll take that one every day if I can get it. Okay, Drew, your best four shots here. Notice a little bit of a trend here in total distance. I'm curious on carry distance here too. Notice a little bit more of a trend with regards to carry distance. That's a little bit to do with the height that you're hitting this club. So the Epic Max LS, it does sit a little bit more flatter, a little bit kind of more, more open mm -hmm. at, at address. How does that look in general for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty solid. I know I'm not a giant fan of just the glossy um, in general. That's just the only issue I had. I mean, it's still a pretty, it's actually for a low spin head. It has kind of a lot, a larger footprint than most, I think. But yeah, I like it. Yeah, the one thing that interests me too, you didn't even have as much ball speed with this one and hit it maybe kind of a solid. You know, the spin rate's still kind of low there as well. But mention we're going to optimize in the future here oh, with yeah. regards to, to loft there. But we're going to stick with kind of nine for now. Um, but as we're, as we're doing the head test, but yeah, we've got some we've got some potential here mm -hmm. to optimize regardless whatever head we choose. Yeah. So let's move on to one that you is a little bit more matte finish. Let's do the Cobra Rad Speed. Okay. That was pretty good. Was I will, uh, I think we have an early lead right now for club head. Yep. Drew, your, your dispersion circle on that Mizuno STZ was just a little bit large. So the final one I actually want to throw in the mix is actually uh, Ping G425 Max. So kind of 
really forgiving driver. Mm -hmm. Just want to throw in the mix just to kind of see what happens. Beautiful painting. I mean, it's... <laughs> so, Drew, you mentioned beautiful painting. I did. I would agree. Pretty consistent with regards to kind of the, the direction here. You definitely have more shots over here that are kind of going low left mm -hmm. than, uh, than, than to, the, to the right side there, too. And I mentioned I got a trick up my sleeve with regards to optimization there with regards to loft and, and lion goal here. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to give you a chance to just at least test these heads out. And we, now we can kind of sense, test them all out the same loft, see which one seems like it's maybe kind of performing the better so we can figure out the head. Then we yep. do a little optimization, then we can figure out the shafts. So that's going to go over the numbers a little bit here. Um, so your club speed when you were hitting your driver was like 112 miles an hour, or about 113 miles an hour. Um, you'll notice, for the most part, we're between 112 and, and 114. So pretty consistent there. How did that golf shaft feel, by the way? Did it seem close to your golf shaft at all? Yeah, it did seem pretty similar. Seem pretty fim similar? OK. So let's touch on both speed. So ball speed, if we're going to rank them from highest to lowest, first thing we're noticing here, the Cobra Rad Speed, 172.2. That actually had the highest ball speed out of them all there. Uh, you were swinging that one a little bit faster, and also the Sim 2, 171.9. So mm -hmm. I would say those two were kind of like the clear yeah. leaders with regards to ball speed if we're focusing on trying to maximize kind of your, your distance there as well. So it's kind of interesting there. Um, spin rate was good. Spin rate around about 2,000 RPMs. Um, now keep in mind, we did nine degree head. I did not put it at the plus 0.6 kind of like you had in yours in the past. Yeah. Because I mentioned what that does is actually close to the club face. So mm -hmm. for, for regards to optimization, what, what I actually want to do next is once we figure out which club head we do, I actually want to do a 10.5 degree head and turn that thing down. What I'm actually doing there is opening the club face. Okay. So I want to make it a little harder for you to kind of turn, turn over there too. But Let's figure out which head we like best. Um, if we look at distance, total distance, the Sim 2 went the furthest, 321.1, carried the furthest, uh, 286.2. The Rad Speed was 280 gone, 318. So those two were definitely pretty good. If we look over on the right side here, you can see you kind of your, your carry distance dispersion there. Um, the height, we'll notice the height was a little bit higher with those ones that are carrying a little bit further. Um, the highest one overall was actually the Epic Max LS, so that stayed in the air a little bit better there as well. Um, so that's why the carry distance was kind of up mm -hmm. there. So really, TaylorMade, Cobra, and Callaway were kind of the top three. I think so. The too. other ones maybe didn't quite perform quite as well. Yeah, I think you definitely have the clear-cut top three there. Um, for whatever reason, I had, I think, there was a couple, I think my first two shots with the Sim 2, I really thought they were going to be kind of similar where that was that, that kind of that hook I've sort of as my miss. And they actually performed a lot better than I thought. So I kind of, to me, that's sort of the one that's the leader right now just because I'd see like that circle I wouldn't have guessed based on maybe how I felt I hit them. Yeah, I mean, you can see here too, it probably was the smallest circle of them all there as well. So that definitely stands out. A little bit straighter, a little more consistent. Let's switch just the total distance and see. Yeah, maybe just a little bit ahead with regards to kind of total distance with regards to dispersion. I would say you said that one probably felt best to you and mm -hmm. the numbers were kind of telling us. I think let's move on with the TaylorMade Sim 2 unless okay. you tell me, hey. No, no I, have, I have no objections to that. No objections to that. Okay. So I did mention I want to just make a little modification to the, to the driver. Um, so I'm going to grab the 10.5 degree head. Just want to kind okay. of try something. Okay. okay. So Drew, with the all fit system here, what we can do is... The all fit system goes down minus one and a half. With the tailor made tip, you can actually go minus two. But I'm going to try minus one and a half and see okay. what happens here. So essentially, it's still nine, just kind of like all the others. But what it is is a 10.5 degree head. Just with, set it lower. We're seeing a difference on the map for sure. Yeah, I'm going to bring that up really quickly here because it's, kind of, it's really kind of interesting. So you can see here, so this is total distance. Notice what happened to your direction. We got you away from the, from the left mm -hmm. side. The left side is going to get on the ground a lot faster and not go as far, essentially, because right. you're never going to get that ball to carry very far. It may roll out of it if you're playing in Texas in the middle of summertime, yeah. but those three right there definitely stand out to me there, too. Much better with regards to kind of total distance here. 
carry distance also was kind of consistently yeah. staying in the air. That was, that was actually three very, very consistent kind of carry distance. But I said a couple more. That'll be good. Nice. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Look at that. Very nice. That, look at this. So I'm focused on this number right here. That thing had zero feet of curve on it. So f try and find how, I mean, look at how many shots I've had and how many have had less than like 20 feet of curve. Yeah, let's look, at the, let's look at these shots here. So if we look on the right side, if we look at all the clubs here, with the exception of this setting, <laughs> there's a lot of curve. There's a lot of curve to the The other way. That's, that's, that's the other way there too. And notice what happens to the height. We rank this now from highest to lowest. Height's now going to enable you to carry the ball a little bit further. So carry distance was a little bit further there as well. Total distance is a little bit further. It's not spinning anymore, even though we've got a 10 and a half degree driver. It's actually spinning kind of mm -hmm. low. It's, it's kind of interesting there. Um, but yeah, it's a good setting. And the Sim 2 driver also is probably a little bit more fade bias compared to a couple of other different models there as well. Um, but yeah, that stands out to me right there. And then just talking about that, that last shot that you hit, that there is pretty mm -hmm. good. So. Yeah, I like, I like to see how, it's actually wild how quickly that setting changed things for me. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's about, at one and a half degrees, it's about probably three degrees open there. Keep in mind with the tailor-made tip, um, you can also go down two degrees aloft, um, which would then make it right around about um, four degrees open, essentially. Mm. So, um, speaking of tailor-made golf shafts, so you you have the 45-inch Ventus. I'm just curious to see where you're catching on the club face here as well. So we bring a look at the, kind of your averages here. See, it's better. It's definitely better. Oh yeah. Um, in general, maybe it's this, look at the other ones here too. It's not too bad. So actually, yeah, I was a little worried because your, your drive when you were originally, originally were hitting yeah. was kind of a little bit kind of on the toe side. And I yeah. thought maybe you would want to go just a little bit longer with the golf shaft. Not so much to get you more speed, it's just because you want to catch kind of a little bit more on the face. If you go shorter, it's going to get further and further kind of on, yeah. on the toe side there too. But I'm comfortable right there with that setting. You know, now that we kind of open that, that face up a little bit for you, now you're catching in that in that spot there that I don't think we need to go longer mm -hmm. with the definitely want to go don't want to go shorter because shorter yeah. would put it more on the toe. Oh yeah, and I know that uh, that's sort of the if you're gonna miss anywhere on the face, you'd better high toe ish that direction is kind of the way to, to miss. Yeah, we well, don't want to be way out on the toe. Way out on the right. toe is gonna cause that ball to kind of die. That, out, I guess out that of quadrant of the club. Yeah, head. that quadrant. So right there is okay. Over mm -hmm. here, mm, it's not, <laughs> not gonna good. work. You know, we, you already struggle with the left ball. We don't need to struggle with left ball anymore. Yeah, 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 correct. But for me, the big, big takeaway right there was, you know, for sure, your average, you know, your curve distance there, really, really good. So we'll notice mm -hmm. 22 feet of curve to the right. When you get the ball to not curve to the left like all the others were doing, the ball is going to stay in the air longer. Landing angle with driver is generally want to be, a, you know, over 30 degrees, and that's the only one that got us over 30 degrees. All the others were kind of lower. So about 35 is pretty much kind of optimal. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty good. High carry, uh, really kind of interesting there. Wasn't your fastest club speed, wasn't your fastest ball speed either, but the carry distance mm -hmm. because the ball stayed in the air was, was awesome. Yeah, guys, I know you mentioned some of that distance I was leaving on the table. Definitely seemed to kind of catch up to that um, with this setting, which yeah, I, I, I very much approve of the setting. <laughs> yeah. So finally, we, what we do at Second Swing is we test golf shafts. So I'm not saying this golf shaft is probably not a good fit. It's probably very, very close to what we were looking at. But I want to at least try two others. Kay. Now, keep in mind, it depends on the fitting and how everything's progressing. If a player wants to hit more heads, we will probably spend less time on the golf shaft yeah. because we know fatigue is a, is a factor. I know this a couple of times there. It looked like you were, you were trying to guide it a little bit, and I told mm -hmm. you, hey, just go after it. No, don't worry about it. I've got this set up for you to, to trust your golf swing, not mm -hmm. where it's going to go left. Yeah. So feel is the most important thing when it comes to golf shaft. Getting the club head, getting the right loft on the club head, getting the optimization is more important. And then from there, think of the golf shaft as kind of like the transmission to the, to the engine. Head's kind of the engine. From there, it's going to be kind of player dependent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Well, uh, I guess I'll leave that. I mean, I'm, you know more than I do about the golf shafts. So 
Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to pick maybe the couple that are yeah. maybe a good fit. Well, I'm probably not going to find anything more stout and lower torque <laughs> and stiffer than the Ventus Black 7X. But maybe we'll test something that's a little, little bit softer okay. and kind of see what happens. So the two golf shafts that I've selected for you here is a little bit softer. So I tried the, I'm going to grab the Graphite Design IZ6X. Just out of curiosity to see how that one kind of performs. Okay. And then I wanted to also grab a stock shaft option from, from TaylorMade as well. So got the Hazardous RDX Smoke 6.5 70 gram. Okay. You finished strong those last two swings there with the IZ6X. Mm -hmm. uh, the first two we'll notice maybe a little bit more kind of left and right a little bit. You had one over here to the left, one over to the right. And then you finished pretty strong in the last two. Now let me ask you, how did the IZ feel to you? It's a little softer. Um, potentially, yeah, it definitely seemed like it was a little, a little on the soft side compared to what I had been hitting. Softer as in a good thing or as softer as you didn't like it? I think it was a good thing. Um, I think, I mean, clearly the one I had way out there was, I just had the face open. Um, but it, it felt pretty, pretty, like really good. Yeah, because I have no idea what you're feeling. All yeah. I can tell, oh, I, I can do is understand kind of what you're telling me or how it feels in yeah. your hands. Because I don't want to all of a sudden say, hey, we should go 10, 15 grams lighter than what you're at. Um, just to kind of, right. based I just, on those, those, last those last two were the best feeling drives of the day. Okay. Um, so I, I will say that. That was, it was really nice. That's good to hear. Let's finish off with the last golf shaft here. It's going to be in between, as I mentioned, around about 70 grams. Hazardous RDX Smoke. Okay. You know, Drew, those were, I gave you four swings there. There's only one that was only half decent. Yeah. This is kind of where I'd say, you know, we don't need to see another swing with this <laughs> one here. Uh, I, if it was me, I would say you're kind of in between the IZ6X or the 7X with the, with the Ventus Black. Mm -hmm. um, we can, we can kind of see this on the dispersion pattern. And then at the end of the day, this is, kind of, this is going to be kind of important. So you know, if we kind of finish it up, we could get a little bit tired there as well. But you'll notice your best one with this one was kind of like right here. You had some better ones up there with, the, with mm -hmm. the other two there too. So let's clear this off just a little bit here and let's talk about those shafts and just kind of see kind of which one was better overall. M let me ask you how that last shaft felt, by the way. Not, I, I, it didn't feel as smooth as the uh, Graphite Design IZ success. Okay. So we got, we got like four shots up there with kind of with, with each one. We didn't, I actually only got three with the last one because you will notice the dispersion pattern was already kind of getting it was already doomed as well. <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of interesting. The, uh, the tightest dispersion was with the heaviest shaft. So that's the, um, that's the Ventus yeah. 7X Black. Wasn't too bad. And you got, you know, had one, maybe use your airlift, face a little bit open here to the right. You know, one just kind of a little bit kind of left of center there, and then you had a couple of really kind of nice ones there as well. I have no problem with playing that chef. I have no problem with the, the Ventus Black either. It's going to come definitely down to kind of feel for you there as mm -hmm. well. But the good news is when we started this, this fitting, you were hitting it over here. Yeah. So that's the good news. So we optimized it with regards to the, the club head settings, the right loft on the driver. And then from there, you know, a lot of, a lot of it's going to come down to feel for you. I, like I said, either one of those is going to be a great option. I would just say the, the heavier shaft may be a little bit easy to maybe hit a little bit straighter, while the lighter yeah. shaft may generate just a little bit kind of wider dispersion. Yeah. But both are good options. Yeah, I think the, just for my sake, I'm not, I don't need more distance. You know, I probably need, I, I definitely need more control, which is where that Ventus uh, will probably be the better option of the shafts, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would, I would give the Ventus Black a try. I like the fact that it was kind of nice and, nice and straight. Um, that's probably kind of the most important thing. We, you know, we got it in the fairway. Both of them we got in the fairway three times, but then mm -hmm. you had maybe a little bit further offline with the 6X versus the, versus the 7X. But as I mentioned, the club head's where it's at. That got yeah. us there. Mm -hmm. Not saying golf shaft doesn't matter. It really does matter. It really helps the player out a lot. I uh, just want to make sure that we, you know, understand that it was the settings with the club head rather than the actual golf shaft that yes. got us where we're at today. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely there was a huge jump when you made the adjustments to kind of changing, well, going to the ten and a half head and then uh, opening the face a little bit. That is where we saw the straighter ball flights and kind of not, you know, it didn't eliminate per se that left uh, hook miss that I have, but definitely 
decrease the likelihood of it happening, which is ultimately what I'm looking for here. So yeah, um, so I mean, there's that one that you left the face open on. Let's take that one away, and then just just kind of see where we where we started from, where we kind of ended up. Okay, so this is kind of where we started from. This white circle. We can take away the RDX smoke because we didn't hit that one as well. Mm -hmm. and let's just kind of see kind of where we went from. Kind of a big big difference right there. I mean, you know, you were hovering left, <laughs> and I've played enough golf and seen you, you hit drivers now to know that, you know, you were definitely kind of in the wrong setting with, with the yeah. driver head there. Carry distance, total distance there. It's pretty good. Yeah. I think big, from, big based on this, I think, you know, that, that red circle probably is the one I'm going to pick uh, the most. So I always like to ask my customers, hey, which, which circle do you like better? Which one is uh, kind of performing the best? Well, I would agree that that red circle was the best. You can see here, pretty similar kind of numbers between those two, but just sneaky a little bit, a little bit further overall total, um, and also a little bit straighter. So pretty Very good. Nice. We got your height to about 100 feet in the air with both of them, which is kind of where we wanted to come come from with regards to your height at 72 feet originally, which was diving low on the left. You know, we picked you up 23 yards. Mm -hmm. We weren't trying to pick you up distance. It just happened to the, to yeah. the loft on the golf club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine tuning the club. And I, I mean, interesting is that the spin really didn't change. I was still able to straighten things out though, which is really cool. Yeah, no, really, really good. Uh, yeah, I, very good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited that you're now gonna probably hit some more fairways. Yeah. Take that yeah, left I think side so. out of the fairway a little <laughs> bit. Uh, this is a very good setting for you. So for golfers that are interested uh, in a fitting here a second swing, uh, of course, this is the type of change that can happen to your game in a positive way. You can see those circles there and the difference. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can visit our fitting website. You can call our team, visit one of our stores to get a second swing tour van fitting. And of course, I'm going to bring my old driver in for a trade and get some good value there to knock off and offset the price of upgrading to this new driver. So. Uh, a lot of great things happen at Second Swing. G great experience here, as, as you can see, uh, and you guys should all take advantage of it. Uh, so, Thomas, thank you again. Not a problem. Thanks for coming in.